Hi everyone. So this week I'm working on a Q&A. I had a lot of different questions that people have submitted over the past couple of weeks. So I've divided them into schooling, money, and day-to-day -day work. And then they had some questions on CRNA versus like AA kind of questions. So I'll be covering that CRNA versus AA questions down the line. So this week I'll be covering schooling. So my first question is, how many years did you need to become a CAA? I needed four years of undergrad and a little bit over two years of the master's programs to be a CAA. For me, I ended up doing about an extra semester of undergrad because I was contemplating the PA route and then I learned about the CAA route. So I have an extra semester in undergrad. And then in between that, I was working. If you do it straight out of school, it'll be about six, a little bit over six years. So I think that's awesome. Next question is, what makes you stand out as an applicant? Do you need a specific major? So I kind of covered this question previously, but you don't need to be a specific major. You need to complete the prerequisites. Now, the fact is like certain majors such as biology or physiology, kinesiology cover a lot of the prerequisites. It would probably be very convenient to complete the prerequisites and also complete your major at the same time. So you're not doing major requirements for your undergraduate degree and you're doing prerequisites on time. It's probably convenient to just try to merge those together if you can. And then in terms of what makes you stand out as an applicant, you could stand out in terms of having great grades, having great clinical experience, and hopefully having both. That would definitely make you stand out. But if you don't, I would say have a balanced application. If you are getting an interview invite from at least one school, there's something about your application that is standing out to admission committees. So from that point on, once you get that interview invite, I would focus on interview skills and just reviewing questions that you think they might ask you a couple of times to yourself, doing that with friends. I did it by myself on the plane when I was taking the flight to the A interviews. So just practice your interview skills and you should be in a good place to get in once you get the invite. So how hard is it to get into the AA program? Can a person who is not a bio or pre-med student handle it? How much free time did you have when doing the masters? I was a chemistry major in my undergraduate degree. So I took a lot of hard and upper level science courses. So for me personally, I am gonna look at that and I'm gonna compare it to how I felt about my master's courses. If I look at one single class, for example, biochemistry in undergrad, and then I look at a class such as physiology in my master's program, I would say that the level of difficulty is similar it probably would be harder for the master's level just a little bit because of the volume of material that you're learning when i was taking my undergraduate courses i purposely tried not to stack a certain number of upper level science classes together i would take maybe three tops at a time for example i did physics i did biochemistry and i did one of my upper level chemistry courses at the same time now when you go to a school you're going to be doing double that you're going to definitely be doing six or seven of these upper level science courses at once gauge your own comfort level and how you felt doing that your undergraduate career and think about how that would feel doing that in your master's program. It definitely gets done so I wouldn't say it's impossibly hard because so many people are getting through the program and succeeding. Think about your experience taking these upper level classes and it will be hard in the master's program because of the volume of material you're getting in in such a compact amount of time as well. And can a person who is not a bio or pre-med student handle it? Again if you can complete the prerequisites you should be able to handle it. It just could be more convenient to be a bio major to complete it so definitely you can handle it. Um, there are people that have handled it in the past and will continue to handle it. So yes, it can be done. How much free time did you have when you were doing the master's? I am someone that likes to over prepare. When I was taking organic chemistry, I was in the office hours and I, people would always say there are certain people that take organic chemistry three times and it takes that third time to finally pass it. They said something like you should measure twice and cut once and that's always really stuck with me and I think even before that that's kind of what I had been doing. I like to over prepare and get it done and do it right the first time rather than do it a couple of times or struggle through doing it once. So for me, I do like to over prepare. So I definitely would say that my risk tolerance for studying is on the lower end. So that's probably why I would study as many hours as I did. And I was studying from like 9 to 11 p.m. on Monday through Thursday. And then on Fridays, I would give myself a lighter schedule and probably stop studying around 8 p.m. or so and cook something nice for myself. Very few times that I went out with my friends and we all went out to the city, which was really fun. But I did have some times for that. On um, Saturday mornings, I feel like I was always tired. So it's taking me a little bit more to get started and I wouldn't do as much on Saturdays. So again, like that was my risk tolerance for it. I probably could have done less, but I feel like you sacrifice so much. You pay so much to be in this position. I personally don't want to do anything that risks that. I would just try to be comfortable with my position uh, by studying. But I had friends that went out almost every week or friends that had children or people that were working part-time and they made it through the didactics portion and beyond. So you definitely could balance things out. That would be up to your efficiency skills and your tolerance. You know, if you could tolerate studying less, 
in terms of what you're comfortable with and you're also a very efficient studier i feel like you could do fine i know people that won't study as much as me during the weeks before but they do generally study every day and then they cram a lot more towards the exam dates so there are people that can do that how many days have you dedicate towards studying in clinicals and can you work during the program so i dedicated about six to seven days a week that was how i felt comfortable getting through the program but other people did less there are people that went to church two times a week and made time for that people with children people that had part-time jobs people that went out all every weekend and that's fine if you can handle that then i respect you if you have the time management skills i totally respect it i personally just don't feel comfortable at doing that but everyone is different so you can dedicate less time and i would also say that it's generally not encouraged to work during the program I understand both sides. I understand that people have families and they feel they want to work and support their families through this time and they don't want to take on more loans and that's just a big part of what they feel they need to do and I respect it and then I also understand the encouragement to not work during the program because we do have such a great income at the end of it. I could see that could possibly impede your success in the program and possibly prevent you from graduating. I could see not working and just focusing on school just to get through the program do well in it you know there's two sides to it and i understand both okay do you think it is significantly easier to stop trying to ace everything and just coast by or is info difficult or and large enough to where even coasting by requires daily studying so i think most of my classmates and myself included would either read the powerpoint flashcards read the textbook at least something before going to class or at least every day you know if it was catching up on another class i think most people study every day whether it's a lot of hours or a little bit of hours just to feel comfortable with the material before you go to lecture or right after i think a lot of people were studying every day i don't see many cases where people weren't studying every day but maybe there's those rare people that have awesome memories and can look at the textbook page for five minutes and just memorize that thing immediately that's amazing that's not me and i don't think that's a lot of people so again i think most people are studying at least some a little bit every day and i would also say that my opinion i don't think you should have an attitude of let me just ace through the program let me try to reduce the amount of studying that i should do because we are in such a delicate position as anesthesia providers we are getting people through very critical times in their lives and i personally wouldn't want someone that just wanted to get by taking care of me and, and that's how i think about the way i care for my patients now i try to consider as much as i can for them so, okay can you do this program with kids at home? Absolutely. I had people in my class and there's, I'm sure every year people that have kids and get through the program and graduate. And you know, some people, it gives them that much more of a drive to get time management skills and do well in the program. So you can absolutely have kids at home and get through the program. Okay, so there's a question on the timeline for standardized exams in terms of applying to school. I know that for med schools, you need to take these exams, the MCAT or GRE, essentially one year before your senior year. I'm assuming junior year summer between junior year and senior year. Is this true for A school as well? And this is to avoid doing a gap year. Or can I take the MCAT my senior year and then immediately apply for A school? So I would say keep the same timeline that you would expect for med school, just so that you have all your options open. Some programs have earlier deadlines. So if you take your exam later, that could reduce your chance of getting into school because you may have one less program that you can apply to. In my experience, I, I didn't do that because I didn't really know about the AA profession until I was halfway through this semester where I was taking certain classes for PA school. When I learned about the AA school profession, I studied for the GRE very quickly. And I tested myself and did a couple practice tests and I felt comfortable with it. And then I took the GRE, it was around Thanksgiving time that I took the GRE and I applied to schools. I think that closed off the ability to apply to Emory for me. So I didn't apply to as many schools, but I did get into the schools that I applied to. No, I, I would say if you can't avoid that, I would, especially since you have the knowledge that you want to do this, I would aim to do it earlier and submit my application earlier. So direct patient contact. I'm currently planning to do hospital volunteering and the requirements are three hours per week for six months. You mentioned that AA schools require four hours per week for six months. Would my experience, which is one hour less weekly, also count? And if I'm not getting paid, do I still fulfill the requirement that they have for direct patient contact? You should still fulfill the requirement, that's fine. And then I would say in terms of the hours, I would aim to be above average. That's how I feel about things. I always wanna over prepare. But if you are a little under average, you could probably say this is an ongoing experience. I'm gonna to continue to get this many hours over the course of however many months more that you're doing experience. So I think that could be one way to show that you have a lot of hours or that you're continuing to expose yourself to the healthcare environment. 
I'm not sure if you can do this, but maybe you can update your hours as the application goes by if you're not getting any interview invites or acceptances. Yeah, and I would put the end date as open-ended so that people know that this is something that's continuing on past your application submission. Well, last question, which is a little bit deeper, is what are some things you wish you knew before? So in terms of me, I wish I had more opportunities to shadow AAs. I am from a non AA state. I was in New York when I was going through this process, so I didn't have as many opportunities to do that. And I just say that because I think it would help to be more acclimated with the OR environment to see the different communication skills that CAAs need to have in the OR. I would like to see how fast we need to be uh, for intubations or lines and things like that. Healthcare is very stressful and it's very demanding. I would also like to see you know, more of the stress and maybe see what are some of the coping mechanisms that CAs use. I would also just like to understand more of the machine before I started, or like the machines and different decisions that CAs make in terms of drug choices and things like that. So that's all the time I'll be taking this week to answer questions. And next week I'll be answering a couple more on money and things of that nature, which I'm really excited for. If you have any more questions, I'll be doing more Q and A's in the future. I really loved looking through all the questions that people left. and organizing it and thinking of answers and I really enjoy this so again if you have more questions feel free to leave them down below and I look forward to catching y'all next week so like comment subscribe and I'll see you soon bye